while I was in Thailand, I talked to a monk who had had some problems with the community that he was in charge of, to the point where he left. And he made an interesting observation that the problems came from the fact that a lot of the people in the community didn't take the Four Noble Truths seriously. What he meant, of course, was that they kept complaining about things outside, blaming their sufferings on things outside, conditions outside, and never taking seriously the idea that maybe their suffering was actually coming from within, and that your main focus should be inside. And one of the purposes of having a, a monastery that's not all that comfortable, and particularly in the monastic life where we can't determine from one day to the next what our food is going to be, a lot of conditions are totally out of our control, is to keep emphasizing that you've got to look inside. If there's any suffering, any stress in the mind, you do what you can to create situations outside so that it's okay, but there are s severe restrictions on what you can do. The main focus has to be inside. Now, there is that passage in the, in the canon where the Buddha talks about having the common sense not to go walking into trenches or falling into cesspools or tripping over cows at night. That's one of my favorite lines, walking around and tripping over a cow. In other words, you use common sense. to avoid dangers. But given just the normal ups and downs of human life when you're dealing with difficult people, where you're dealing with limitations of having a body, the fact that you're a human being living in, living in a human realm, you really have to focus all your attention inside, your primary attention inside, to see what is it in the mind that keeps complaining, what is it in the mind that keeps saying, this isn't good enough, that's not good enough. And even when it's not good, the question is, is it good enough? Can you survive? There was that one time when John Fung told me to sit up all night and meditate. My immediate reaction was, I've been working hard all day and I just didn't have the energy. And he said, look, is it going to kill you? Well, no. Well, you can do it then. And even in situations where you think it might kill you, you say, well, maybe the mind is creating all kinds of monsters where they don't exist. It's good to test them. This is why contentment with external situations is an important quality to develop in the practice. Gratitude for the things you do have. We have a peaceful place to practice here. We're not under a lot of pressure to go out and try to bring in disciples or build large buildings or whatever. Things are quiet. Things are simple. There's a lot of time to practice. So you try to develop that sense of contentment. You try to develop that sense of gratitude. At least I've got this opportunity right here, right now, to practice. And that's the important thing, because that gives you the space to turn around and look inside. What is it about the mind that's constantly complaining, this isn't good enough, that's not good enough, this person, that thing, whatever? Then you also want to develop the quality of patience and endurance. The two things you really got to work with are, as the Buddha said, harsh pains and sharp words. The things people say can often hurt a lot more than a, a bad knee or a bad ankle. So what wisdom have you developed in order to be able to withstand these things? What inner strengths have you developed so that you can say, well, I can live with the food that is here, and I can live with the conditions that are here, and that's okay. I don't have to go way out of my way to create a special diet or way out of my way to create special conditions like this or that, because otherwise everything gets focused on the outside, and what's going on inside gets totally ignored. But where are the causes of suffering? Well, there's the clinging and the craving and the ignorance and all those other factors and dependent core rising that are whirling around in your mind right here, right now. It 
it's like taking a picture with a camera. The interesting things are right close up, but you've got your lens set to infinity. So what's close up is going to be blurred. Sometimes it's so blurred you don't even see it. And your focus is way out someplace else. So bring the focus in right here. What's going on with this breath? What is the mind doing with this breath? Is it staying with the breath or is it fabricating all kinds of issues? Developing all kinds of problems. Long commentaries on this, that, and the other thing. And the reason we have that reflection on the requisites, food, clothing, shelter, and medicine, is you have enough to take care of the needs of the body. Think of those contemplations that Buna had. He was going to go off to a rough part of India. He went to say goodbye to the Buddha. And the Buddha said, that's a pretty rough part you're going to. What if the people there say nasty things about you? And he says, well, I think that they're very civilized and that they're not hitting me. What if they hit you? I think they're very civilized and they're not throwing stones at me. What if they throw stones at you? I think they're very civilized and they're not stabbing me. What if they're stabbing you? I think they're very civilized and they're not killing me. What if they kill you? He says, at least my death wouldn't have been a suicide. Wouldn't have been a suicide. It's when you're dealing with difficult people. Keep that in mind, and also the Buddha's image of the, the bandits with the, the saw. If there's some way you can fight them off, you do fight them off. But you don't let ill will get in the way. And if you find that they're totally pinned you down and there's nothing you can do, even then you're not supposed to have ill will for them. That's the point you say, well, there's really nothing I can do. I have to give up. But I'm not going to have ill will toward these people, because then your mind gets fixated on them. Someone was commenting, we had someone in here this morning chanting that phrase for goodwill. And instead of, may I be free from oppression, they said, may I be free from obsession. Well, they're right. Think about the things that the mind is obsessing about. I mean, you do your job outside, you do your duties outside, you do what has to be done outside. But your main issues are inside right here. What's the mind cooking up right now? What new issues is it creating to stab itself with? Try to take those Four Noble Truths seriously. The cause of stress and suffering that's weighing on the mind is what's happening in the mind itself. The things outside that it brings into cause itself suffering are the things it brings in through craving and clinging. So try to examine your cravings and clingings. That's where the focal point should be in these pictures you're taking of your mind. Because this is where the real issues are, and this is where the solution is too.